Howdy folks, Carl Jorn here, Pioneer Field Agronomist from Northwest Indiana. Uh, taking a look at some beans here on July 20th of 2023. Uh, common question this time of year is, when should I apply fungicide in my soybeans? Uh, and the typical answer one will hear from industry folks and academics alike is somewhere in that R2, R3, R4 growth stage. So the common follow-up question is, how on earth does one know when we're in R2, R3, or R4? So I'm here to answer that question for you today and provide an example that uh, could be applied this year for you all. So how one goes about growth staging a soybean plant is uh, in the R stages, the reproductive stages, is you, you look for the most recent mature leaf on the plant, and that's the trifoliate that's completely unfurled and the leaf margins are no longer touching. So on a little bit of a breezy afternoon here, this would be our most recent mature leaf. So he's number one, we count down from there. This is leaf number two, followed by leaf number three, followed by leaf number four. For most growth stages, we're concerned with the four uppermost nodes. Um, an R1 growth stage, that's when we have a bloom anywhere up and down on the main stem. R2, we're taking a look at the two uppermost nodes of the plant and looking for flowers. Bingo, I've got flowers in the, in the top two nodes here. So does that mean I have an R2 growth stage plant? Well, we need to do a little more investigating to understand that. An R3 growth stage plant is when we have a soybean pod that is the length of about a quarter of an inch. And so anywhere in the four uppermost nodes of the plant is where we're looking for that quarter of an inch pod. A uh, quarter of an inch is somewhere less than the width of your pinky fingernail, just for easy measurement there. And I have a pod that is uh, in that in that length um, that would be considered an R3 plant. So this is a very early R3 growth stage plant. And for beans that got planted the last week of April, the first week of May, um, let's use an example of one of our larger volume products, uh, 31A73s, so an, a group three bean, an early group three, those are just now entering into the R3 growth stage. So if we're trying to decide when we should make a fungicide application, know that right now a good majority of beans will be entering the R3 growth stage here in the coming days, depending on planting date. Uh, we spend about 10 days in that R2 to R3 growth stage, and then we enter into R4. So how does one determine when they're in R4? Very simple. Uh, again, look at the four uppermost nodes of the plant. And once we have a pod that is the length of three quarters of an inch rather than one quarter, that's when we've established the R4 growth stage. So the question becomes, Carl, what's your favorite time to make fungicide applications in beans? And for me, it's the later growth stage for R3. So not early, we're just hitting it here, right? I just found one pod that, that qualifies. Um, the reason why I prefer that later growth stage is that as you look across this field of beans, uh, this year we've got some shorter stature soybeans. That's all well and good. That'll make for good harvest stability, um, standability, I should say. But what we're keenly interested in is how many nodes are going to be on this plant. Because as an indeterminate crop, this soybean is going to continue to put on new nodes, new blossoms. And our goal is to protect that uppermost cluster of pods. And if it hasn't developed, if it hasn't revealed itself yet that fungicide is not going to have activity in the uppermost part of the canopy so that's why i like the r3 later r3 growth stage rather than an r2 or an earlier r3 timing so these beans they're a little early if i were to count the number of nodes for you here know that we've got 13 nodes on this plant uh, ideally, I'd prefer to be in that 15 node range, and that's where we see a very good consistent return on our investment for fungicide applications. Last thing I'd leave you with, Northwest Indiana, typically we, we apply fungicides for white mold. Um, usually you see the first application in an R1 to R2 growth stage, followed there, uh, there later by 14 days um, for a second follow-up application with a single mode of action product like Approach. Um, for a more quote-unquote typical fungicide application, not managing for white mold, that's where we look at that later R3 growth stage. Um, 
for things like frog eye, um, septoria brown spot, um, and some folks uh, will apply fungicide just to help maintain plant health so we can pack a little more uh, pounds in into um, you know what our overall harvest is going to be from the field. So uh, those are some things for consideration. Uh, in addition to that, uh, as I have been scouting, I've seen a number of fields that have considerable amount of uh, Japanese beetle leaf feeding. Not so much in the way of bean leaf beetles, but that's something for us to be mindful of. So as we get a little bit later on in the, in the uh, development of these beans, those pests can become uh, significant concerns in terms of yield reduction. So one might consider including a, an insecticide in this fungicide pass as well, if you're getting close to threshold. Uh, we have seen in the past uh, a little bit of a synergistic effect when we use uh, soybean uh, fungicide in addition to insecticide um, and so take that for what it's worth uh, as you're making decisions on uh, uh, whether or not you're going to justify both being in the tank for a fungicide application. As always if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or your local uh, pioneer sales professional and we'd be more than happy to help you grow stage your soybeans uh, you know consult on whether or not uh, fungicide would be a good decision for the 2023 crop and uh, anything else that you might have we'd be more than happy to uh, give, give you a second opinion on so with that hope you have a great rest of your day and best of luck that concludes this pioneer agronomy video podcast visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on twitter and facebook for more agronomy insights